Good evening, this is Enyumba FM News on Enyumba 94.3 FM. The headlines. Acting Inspector General of Police Kayode Ewechukun says police will strive for excellence and accountability to Nigerians. Abia government withdraws lease, suspends inauguration of appointed management committee members for Aba Omahe markets. Abia state government says promises to revitalize state-owned cocoa processing industry. These and other stories plus foreign entertainment and sports shortly. My name is Precious Njoko. <music> President Bola Tinubu is exempting the boards of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, and the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAG, from the recent decision to dissolve boards of agencies and parastatals. This is contained in a statement by the Director of Information in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Willy Basi. President Bola Tinubu had earlier approved the immediate dissolution of the governing boards of all federal government parastatals, agencies, institutions and government-owned companies. He directed the affected MDAs to refer matters requiring the attention of their boards to the president through the permanent secretaries of their ministries and offices pending the constitution of a new board. The permanent secretaries were also directed to route such correspondences to the president through the office of the secretary to the government of the federation. The directive took effect from Friday, June 16, 2023. Vice President Kashim Shatima has met with British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery, at the State House Abuja. In a chat with State House correspondents after the meeting, the British High Commissioner said the meeting with the Nigerian Vice President was fruitful as it focused on how to ramp up bilateral relations between the two countries, particularly in the area of boosting economic engagement. Montgomery said British ministers are responding positively to the policies of the President Bola Tinubu administration, including removal of fuel subsidy and unification of foreign exchange rates. The British High Commissioner said he discussed with the Vice President on the measures to cushion the effect of the President's first policies like subsidy removal. A coalition of 30 civil society organizations, CSOs, is charging President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to declare a national commitment to the fight against corruption. It urged Tinubu not to appoint individuals with allegations of corruption against them into any public office because it will continue to taint the image of the country. The Executive Director, Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, CIS, LAC, and Head of Transparency International Nigeria, TI Nigeria, Malam Alwal Musa Rafasajani, read the position of the coalition on Tuesday in Abuja. He said it seemed the president did not have the issue of anti-corruption as a priority in his agenda despite that corruption had eaten deeper into every sector of the nation's society and crippling the country like an epidemic. This is necessary in order to give confidence to Nigerians and international community that his government is not going to be populated with crooks, criminals, people with allegations of corruption and people who have bought their way and capture power for personal use. It is important that he makes such commitment. And once he does that and follows with sincere action, then it is possible that we can begin to redeem our confidence. And international community will also you know, have more confidence in our country and they will be able to invest. It is important for the sake of our country progress that Ahmed Tinubu, President Bola Tinubu, should declare serious commitment and action acting inspector general of police kayode ebetokun says the force will strive for excellence and accountability to nigerians 
He further assured Nigerians of his readiness to provide adequate security for Nigerians with the assistance of other security agencies. Ebotokun said this at the handing taking over ceremony at the Louis Evert House Abuja. While calling on all Nigerians to partner with the force in the transformative journey he would be embarking on, he urged Nigerians to collaborate with the police to build trust, restore confidence in our law enforcement institutions, and create a Nigeria where every citizen stays safe. We will strengthen our intelligence gathering capabilities, bolster interagency cooperation, <clears throat> and enhance our capacity to respond swiftly to emerging security threats. In the coming days and weeks, we will unveil plans and strategies to secure the nation and build enduring peace across our communities. We are the Nigerian police force, and we will live up to our constitutional obligation as the primary, as the primary agency for internal peace in Nigeria. We will invest in innovative ways to foster ongoing training, promoting a culture of continuous learning where we adapt to the evolving needs of our communities and the challenges of our times. A retired Assistant Inspector General of Police, AIG, Hakim Odomoshu, has denied being appointed as the chairperson of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Reports had earlier emerged that the former Commissioner of Police in Lagos had been appointed to replace the suspended Abdul Rashid Bawa. President Bola Tinubu had suspended the former chairman of the anti graft for abuse of office on 14th June. A statement from the presidency said the suspension was due to weighty allegations of abuse of office against Mr. Bawa. Mr. Bawa's suspension was to allow for proper investigation into his conduct while in office. Nigeria's National Emergency Management Agency has welcomed 102 distressed Nigerians, mostly young women, from Tripoli, Libya. They were brought back to the country on a chartered flight via El Burak Air Boeing 737-800 with registration number 5A-DMG. The agency confirmed their arrival in a statement on its website. According to the statement, the NEMA Director General received the returnees on arrival at the cargo wing of Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja. The acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Ambassador Omar Damagun, has appealed to party members to let bygones be bygones and come up with practical solutions to the challenges bedeviling the party. He made the appeal in his opening remarks at a meeting of the party's National Working Committee Select Committee in Abuja. The party chairman enjoined the party leaders to speak freely because the essence of the meeting was to forge a way forward. This meeting is going to be an interactive session. And I want us to be cautious of the fact that while making your contribution, we should be mindful of the fact that we are one family. Contribute in a manner that will not hurt the sensibility of this. The detained leader of the Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOB, Namdekano, needs urgent ear surgery amid his reported failing health. His lawyer, Chief Mike Ozekome, SAN, has told the Federal High Court Abuja. The DSS medical team also confirmed this at the resume hearing of a case where Kanu is seeking an order granting him unhindered access to his personal doctor. Addressing Justice Bintan Yako, Ozekeme said the DSS has repeatedly refused to grant his client access to his personal doctor and also refused to release medical records of the Biafra leader. Ozekeme said the action of the DSS indicates that it is not willing to allow his client access to proper medical attention, insisting that he is being treated like a guinea pig in their custody in breach of Section 7 of the Anti-Torture Act. In his reply, the DSS lawyer, A.M. Dalami, told the court that Kano was being given proper feeding and medical attention while in custody. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Justice Nyako has adjourned the suit to July 28, 2023 for judgment. That meeting 
I told the director of legal services after we had brainstormed for more than one hour as to how and why such a short surgery will be done. And the meeting was actually instigated by my letter to the DSS. I think Nam Dekanu should be allowed to have this is ear surgery based on your own your own medical report. The SSS itself, their doctor, their in-house doctor, checked his ear in November 2022 and found that it was having some blockage and that there was a need to operate on this ear before he gets deaf. And still on IPOB, meanwhile, the indigenous people of Biafra has clarified that Michael Zekeme, SAN, and Ifani Ejiofo are still legal representatives for the pro Biafra leader Mazin Namdekanu. The IPOB group also dismissed the reports making the rounds that both lawyers have been disengaged from Kanu's legal team by his family members, adding that Kanu's family members can't sack the lawyers because they were engaged by IPOB. In a statement, the spokesman for the group, Ima Powerful, said enemies of Biafra were spreading the rumors in order to provoke the legal team to abandon the struggle to free Kanu from detention. The group, therefore, encouraged members of his legal team not to be distracted or discouraged in their fight for the unconditional release of Kanu from DSS detention. Abia State Government has suspended the planned inauguration of newly appointed members of Management Committee constituted to oversee markets in Abba and Omaya. The government also said the list of those initially appointed has been withdrawn. Dr. Chimezie Ukebu, Special Advisor to Governor Alex Oti on Trade and Commerce, who announced the development in a statement, said a new date for the inauguration will be announced in due time. <music> Abu State Government says it to revitalize the state-owned cocoa processing industry to boost the production of the commodity and enhance the economic fortunes of the state. The state deputy governor Ikechuku Emetu announced this during a meeting with the members of the state cocoa transformation committee in Omaha. He said the Nigeria was the largest exporter of cocoa after Cote d'Ivoire. Hence, the state government was poised to explore the entire value chain in producing and processing the commodity. He added that the government will provide funding and training for cocoa farmers to adopt improved ways of farming to boost production. The Naira appreciated by 1.79% against the United States dollar on the investor and exporter forex window on Tuesday, closing at 756.61 Naira per dollar. On Monday, Naira slumped to 770.38 per dollar at the close of trading on the investor and exporter window on Monday, from 686.96 per dollar at the close of trading on Friday. As of Tuesday, the majority of traders were quoting 745 Naira per dollar as a buy offer and 755 Naira per dollar as selling price, bringing the average rate to 750 Naira per dollar, about 2.6% behind the official market rate on the first trading day of the week. Figures obtained from the FMDQ, the trading, which commenced at 701.75 per dollar on Tuesday, reached a high of 781 per dollar before closing at 756.61 per dollar. FMDQ Financial Market Infrastructure Group Warehousing is a securities exchange and self-regulatory organization licensed by the SEC to provide a platform for inter alia the listing, quotation, registration, and trading of securities. You're listening to AIM by FM News. The news continues shortly with foreign entertainment and sports. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying tuned. You are listening to Aimba FM News. And from the foreign scene, the U.S. Coast Guard says rescuers using sonar to search for the missing Titanic submersible with five people on board detected underwater noises in the North Atlantic near where the craft vanished two days earlier. 
The announcement is the most encouraging sign yet that the tourists who were on route Sunday to visit the wreckage of the Titanic in a 21-foot, 6.5-meter mini-sub might still be alive, as rescue teams race to reach them before their air supply runs out. The submersible named Titan was carrying three fee-paying passengers, British Bologna Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Shadaza Dawood and his son Suleiman. And finally, from our sports desk. Abia State Government has appointed Mr. Innocent Owe as the acting chairman of Abia Warriors, pending the constitution of a new board for four clubs in the state. It will be recalled that the Abia State Government is supporting four clubs in the state, Enyumba, Abia Warriors, Abia Comets and Abia Angels. Owe, who is a principal officer with the state civil service, has been with the club for over 20 years. Confirming the appointment of Owe in a meeting with the management and staff of the club. The special advisor to the governor on sports, Mr. Chinedu AKK, said the directives of the government stand until such a time that boards of the teams will be reconstituted. He advised all the staff to join hands with the acting chairman to pilot the club to higher levels. Owe said that his appointment, though in an acting capacity, is the act of court and approved by the state government. The sports story brings us the end of the evening news on Ayumba. Before we go, here are the main points again. Acting Inspector General of Police Kayode Ebertakun says the force will strive for excellence and accountability to Nigerians. Abu State Government has suspended the planned inauguration of newly appointed members of Management Committee constituted to oversee markets in Aba and Umahir. Abu State Government says it will revitalize the state-owned cocoa processing industry to boost the production of the commodity and enhance the economic fortunes of the state. For more stories, you can visit www.enimbafm.com. To report events and news around you, please text or WhatsApp 0814-993-0596, 0814-993-0596 or send an email to enimbafmnews at gmail.com.